Rapid sequence intubation, or RSI, is the process of quickly creating the optimal conditions you need for intubation. In other words, it's a way to quickly sedate and paralyze a patient who needs airway protection. An indication for RSI includes patients who fail to maintain or protect their airway or at high risk for aspiration. For example, patients with altered mental status and those with upper GI bleeds. Historically, the presence or absence of a gag reflex has been advocated by some people as a reliable indicator of the patient's ability to protect their airway. But the gag reflex is absent in about 12 to 25% of normal adults. A better way to evaluate a person's ability to maintain and protect their airway is to evaluate the patient's level of consciousness and their ability to speak to you. For example, do they follow commands? Are they unconscious? Additionally, you want to observe your patient to see if they're able to swallow and tolerate their oral secretions. If they're not, then the patient is likely not maintaining a safe and patent airway. Many of these patients will require short-term manipulation, such as a jaw thrust or placement of an oral or nasal trumpets. But in general, a patient who requires this type of mechanical help to maintain their airway probably needs to be intubated. Another indication for RSI is a patient who fails to ventilate or oxygenate. For example, those in a CHF exacerbation, a COPD or asthma exacerbation. In the emergent setting, evaluating a patient's ability to ventilate or oxygenate is made on clinical grounds. Look at the patient. Is their breathing labored? And is there a concern that they will tire out from their breathing? Adjuncts to your exam can also help determine a patient's ability to ventilate and oxygenate. Things like a pulse oximeter, continuous capnography, blood gases, etc. Temporary measures such as the delivery of oxygen through a nasal cannula, face mask, or even positive pressure ventilation can be used to stabilize the patient. And sometimes these interventions may prevent a patient's deterioration. But in general, a patient who needs assistance or positive pressure ventilation in order to ventilate or oxygenate adequately will likely require intubation, or at least it should be strongly considered. There are also certain conditions where a patient is protecting their airway, ventilating, and oxygenating perfectly fine, but you will still need to consider intubation. These patients often have a predictable clinical course that will often lead to intubation. For example, overdose patients may require intubation, especially in the early clinical course, because of high likelihood for deterioration and the need for airway protection. Another example would be a patient who sustained multiple traumas, or hemodynamically unstable traumas, even if the patient is awake, alert, and protecting their airway. You may expect these patients to quickly deteriorate. Ultimately, these patients may seem to have an intact airway, but often have a predictable clinical course that rapidly progresses to issues in airway protection and an inability to ventilate or oxygenate. So in short, RSI is simply the steps a clinician takes to rapidly secure an airway involving the use of medications to sedate and paralyze the patient in order to try and create the most perfect conditions for intubation. And in summary, you would consider RSI in a patient who fails to maintain or protect their airway, those who fail to ventilate or oxygenate, and patients whose clinical courses you expect to have a high likelihood of deterioration.